Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing another meal prep video since you guys seem to like them so much. So this video is going to have a fall theme to it and I'm going to show you how to make three different vegan recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they're all easy to make ahead of time and you can reheat them throughout the school or work week so you won't go hangry and you'll have yummy food. Like I just said, all the recipes are fall themed so they have some cozy spices and they're all warming and comforting but they're still healthy and pretty dang tasty too. If fall isn't your thing or you're just looking for more meal prep inspo, I do already have a whole entire meal prep playlist which I will link in the description of the video. It has a ton of other recipes for you guys but let's get into the recipes that are in this video. First step for breakfast, we're going to be making some apple cinnamon steel cut oatmeal. And you can use regular oats for this. There will be notes in the recipe blog, but I prefer to use steel cut oatmeal for this recipe because it has a really nice texture and a bite to it. So to season our oatmeal, we're going to be adding some cinnamon as well as a tiny pinch of nutmeg and some salt. Salt is important guys, don't skip it. And then for our liquid, we're going to be using some non-dairy milk to make things creamy, but we're also going to be using some apple cider, which is the secret ingredient here to get all that apple goodness in there and naturally sweeten the oats without having to add any sugar. So we're also going to add a little bit of water just to balance the ratios out, give everything a good stir, and then bring this mixture to a simmer. And you're going to cook this down until the oats absorb all of the liquid and become nice and tender. And the secret to creamy oats, in my opinion, is also to stir them pretty frequently so I kept stirring mine as the oats cooked in the pot and as you could see they gradually absorbed more of the liquid and got thicker and creamier and yummier I mean I guess they weren't edible before so now they're yummier but once they become about this texture I like to stop cooking them then just because they will thicken up as they cool a little especially if you're reheating this for meal prep I would suggest making the oats a little less runny than you would want them the next day and then we're also going to be making an apple cinnamon topping for this oatmeal. And you can actually do this while the oatmeal is cooking. You're just going to add some diced apples, some lemon juice, a little bit more apple cider, some cinnamon, and a teeny tiny pinch of salt into a pot. And then you're going to bring this to a simmer and cook the apples down until they're nice and tender. And I just think this takes the oatmeal to a whole other level. It really doesn't take hardly any time at all. And for my apples, I used a mix of a Granny Smith apple as well as a Gala apple because the Granny Smith is a little more tart while the Gala is more sweet. So it becomes a nice balance. It's not overly sugary. Personally, I don't like my breakfast to be that sugary. But as you can see, the apples get nice and soft and tender here. And then we're just going to remove these from the heat. And I did want to show you guys, while the apples were cooking, my oatmeal thickened up quite a bit. I didn't cook it anymore. So that's why I want you to cook the oatmeal a little less so it's more runny. Because especially if you're reheating this later, it's going to thicken up even more. So now to assemble our bowls, you're just going to put your apple cider infused oatmeal into the bottom of your bowl and then top it with some of those cinnamon apples and then you can top it however you'd like. I decided to add some freshly chopped walnuts just because I like a little bit of a crunch but I think this would also be really delicious with peanut butter or almond butter. This oatmeal is so cozy and hearty and satisfying just makes me want to wear a big fluffy sweater and some fluffy socks while I drink it. Maybe have a mug of chai tea on the side but if you are doing it for meal prep I just want to say you can layer it in a jar like so and you can reheat this or you can eat it cold however you prefer. Then for lunch, we're going to be making some warm lentil salad bowls. These are basically like Buddha bowls. Um, so to start out, we're going to roast our veggies in the oven because this is going to take the longest amount of time. So for my veggies, I am using some sweet potatoes. I just chop these up into coins, but you can dice them smaller if you want them to be smaller in the final salad. And then we're also going to slice a shallot, which is kind of a mixture between a red onion and garlic. It's just going to add some extra flavor to our roasted vegetables. So we're going to be adding the shallot in with the sweet potatoes so you can layer all of the sweet potatoes onto a baking tray. I lined mine with a silicone mat, but you could also use parchment paper or grease it with a little bit of oil. And then just sprinkle the shallot on over the top and sort of spread it around the sweet potato coins. 
And then we're also going to be roasting some beets. I prefer to roast my beets. I think the flavor in them is so much sweeter and yummier versus steaming them or cooking them another way. And it's really easy to roast your beets too. I just chop the big ones up into smaller pieces. If they are a little too large, I then to actually roast them, you're just going to wrap them in tin foil to make a sort of pocket. And then to steam the beets, I like to add in about half of a teaspoon of water before I seal the actual compartment and you just plop it into the oven like that. I don't even bother peeling my beets beforehand. I find that this skin is a lot easier to remove afterwards and also I just wash my beets. So you're going to wrap your beets, place them on the tray with the sweet potatoes and then pop that into the oven. Somehow I forgot to film that part. But while that's in the oven, we're going to work on our lentils. So these are some rosemary garlic lentils and they taste really, really freaking good. I've been making this recipe like every week uh, just for my own personal meal prep. So we're going to need some brown lentils, some fresh rosemary, some fresh thyme, and some garlic powder. And then we're going to add in some vegetable broth. And I think the secret to making these lentils taste really good is the vegetable broth I am using. I bought it on Amazon, but I think you can get it in some grocery stores. It's a vegan beef flavored vegetable broth. It just works so well with the rosemary and the lentils and it is vegan. And if you guys can get this, I'll get it. It's really, really good. So while the lentils are cooking, we're also going to steam some kale for our Buddha bowls. I actually asked you guys on Instagram if you preferred steamed kale or massage kale, and you said because it was the winter time, you want warm foods instead, which I think makes sense. So I just steamed my kale. I didn't add any flavor to it because we're going to be adding more flavor later. But as you can see, our sweet potatoes are coming out and they look nice and soft and golden on the bottom, which is what we are looking for. So we're going to actually take the sweet potatoes out and we're just going to cook the beets for a little bit longer. The full recipe instructions are on the blog post, which is linked below. So at about this time, the lentils should be done cooking. As you can see, they have absorbed most of the liquid, but if there is extra liquid, you can go ahead and drain it off and just discard it but these lentils are really good guys you gotta make them asmr anyways after the beets have finished roasting then we're just going to unwrap them and you can peel them it is pretty easy to peel them but also like i said i usually don't peel them because i don't mind the skin i just dice them up and then they're ready to add to our bowls so now that we have all of our ingredients, we can go ahead and assemble it. So if you are making this for meal prep, I would assume you want to put it in some sort of Tupperware. So we're going to start out with our steamed kale, some of our lentils, some sweet potato coins, some roasted beets, and then a sprinkle of parsley and a lemon wedge for a little bit of acidity. And then for the dressing, I used my rosemary garlic cashew cream, which goes really, really well with the lentils. I just showed you guys how to make this in my savory breakfast recipe video. And that is it. Obviously, if you work from home or you're making this for an easy dinner, you can just put it into a bowl and serve it in the same way, either way, it's going to be really delicious. You could even massage the cashew cream dressing into the kale beforehand. Last but not least, we're going to be making some black eyed pea soup with some quinoa in it for our dinner. Or you could switch this and have this for lunch, have the other one for dinner. You do you. But these are black eyed peas. Apparently, some people don't know what they are. I was talking to my friends, um, but I grew up eating these a lot. I don't know if that's because my dad is from Tennessee, but I love black eyed peas. So we're going to be using them in the soup as well as some collard greens. You've probably seen these in your grocery store. Some people use them as like low carb wraps, but we're going to be using them in our soup. The only thing is they have a stem that's kind of not fun to eat basically like kale so we're just going to de-stem our collard greens first um, it's really easy just fold them in half and cut the stem part out and then we're just going to roughly chop them so they're ready to add to our soup so to start out we're going to add some vegetable broth to a pan with some onion and some garlic and we're going to saute this until both the onion and the garlic become fragrant and translucent then at this point, we're going to add in some carrots, some thyme, and some smoked paprika for a nice smoky flavor. Again, just mix all of this together and saute this until the carrots cook down a little and become tender. Then at this point, we're going to add in a can of diced fire roasted tomatoes and our cooked black eyed peas. I actually cooked my peas from dry, but you can use canned beans if you want to, just rinse them first. And then we're going to add in some water and vegetable broth and then we're going to add in our quinoa. And the quinoa will just cook as the soup simmers down, so it's going to thicken the soup a little, and it only takes about 15 minutes to cook, and we would want our soup to simmer for about 15 minutes anyways, just to incorporate all of the flavors, so we're just gonna keep doing that, and the soup's gonna thicken, and life is great, you know, pretty easy. You can do something else while you're doing this. I like to practice handstands, but if you don't do yoga, you could like go on Instagram or something. And then with a few minutes before the soup finishes cooking, you're going to add in your collard greens and stir them in. I don't like my greens to be overcooked. That's why I like to add them closer to the end of my soups. 
but after that you are pretty much done you can just add some salt and pepper to taste if you would like and you are ready to serve i think the soup is hearty enough to serve on its own um obviously if it's for dinner you could serve it with something else like some crusty bread or a side salad obviously i always encourage you guys to eat according to your own hunger cues but the soup is really hearty and yummy and delicious just like all the other recipes in this video so you should try it out you should try them all out you should meal prep them all hey and that is it for our vegan meal prep. As always, all of the full recipes are linked in the description box as well as a link to my Pinterest page in case you wanna save any of these recipes for later. And if you feel so inclined, you could go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I actually do need your help. So if you could leave a comment below, let me know if you do meal prep. And when you meal prep, I would love to know how many meals you actually meal prep. I was thinking of doing just breakfast and lunch meal prep videos, cause I'm not sure how many people actually meal prep their dinner for every night. But if you guys do, just let me know and I'll continue to keep it in, in the videos. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.